So here's the Scorpion model as we downloaded it from the internet. If you take a look at it, we'll see that it's really kind of low quality, low polygon count. We can see large facets and all this is going to set us up for failure at the machine. Even the best surface finish in the world on this part is going to look really ugly and faceted. And, uh, and that really reflects badly on, on Mastercam and the machine. So we want to make this part look much nicer than what it actually is. So the first thing that we have to do here is make sure this mesh is a clean mesh. So on the mesh toolbar, we have check mesh. What check mesh does when we grab this mesh, it will find any bad facets. So you can see here, there's non-manifold edges, flipped facets, things that make this mesh not watertight or just generally some problem facets. Mastercam can say, delete these problem facets. I don't need to save the geometry. It saves these little points here if you wanted to save them to see where the bad geometry was. Delete all that. And if I run check mesh once more, we'll see no problems found. This is a nice clean mesh that we can work with. So from now on, we can start using our mesh tools with full capabilities. The next thing we're gonna do is explode this mesh. We can see this is a single body, right? If I look on levels, there's one entity in our level manager. The way this was modeled, each of these little segments of the tail, each of the legs, all were modeled as individual bodies and then stitched back together into a mesh. So what I can do here is run explode mesh, select this guy. We're gonna make a copy of it for now. And I need to turn on split disjoint mesh. When I click preview, we see mesh bodies result in 11 mesh bodies. So now each of these different color coded bodies is its own individual piece of a mesh file that we can use. So let's say, okay, because I said copy, the original full body still exists. So I'm gonna move that to a new level just to kinda get this out of our way. Now we have our individual mesh bodies that we can work with. Let's start up here with the tip of the stinger. How can we make this mesh look a little nicer? The first thing I wanna do here is turn on show mesh facet edges. What that does is it shows the edges of all the triangles that make this mesh. And you can see this is a really low poly model, really large triangles. So the first thing I wanna do is use the refine tool in Mastercam to make these smaller. So I wanna refine the full mesh, grab this one for now. What happens is Mastercam kind of measures the average current edge length of this mesh. Let's say I wanna target 10 thousandths of an inch for my average edge length, that edge being the length of these triangle edges. If we zoom in and see the results, we can see that these facets are smaller than these facets. What that means is we need to run more iterations of refine to get the result we're after. So if I say three iterations and click preview, we get a much more consistent result. I could even go up and say, let's say seven iterations. And ultimately, we end up with these perfect isotropic triangles, meaning these are all basically the same edge length on all three sides. Now you can see the facet structure on the stinger tip is much more uniform than that on the other tail segments. So let's run refine on these other segments as well. So same thing, we'll target, we'll target 10 thousandths, we'll leave the same iterations. There we go. And then let's do the same thing just for one more. Target 10 thousandths. We'll just do these first three for now. The mesh now is much more uniform, but it's still not quite what we want. We can see it did soften up some of the edges, but if I turn off facet edges, we can see it's still really kind of faceted, really jagged looking. So the next step would be to run smoothing. So we'll open smooth area. Again, we're gonna select an entire mesh at a time. Start with the stinger tip. There are four different smoothing methods that we can use here. And it's really hard to tell you which one is the right one. In this case, this is just trial and error. So I kind of just run preview and see what we get. We can see different results. Minimized area tends to make this a much smaller body. Average does a really good job pretty often, but not quite good enough here. We can see it left some of the larger facets. When I did this on the Scorpion, I actually used preserve curvature. In this case, I think I just cranked up the number of iterations. Again, same as smoothing. I could run three iterations and get something more. I can run 10 iterations and you get something that's really pretty organic. So let's do that same thing on these. Now, 10 iterations actually really washed out a lot of the detail of this tail segment. So 
maybe five, maybe three. You know, three, it kind of leaves some of the spikes, but they're not truly one facet spikes anymore. So let's say okay, and do one more here. So you can see the before and after of, you know, these three nice segments that look really natural and organic versus these that are just really jagged and need a little help to look nice. The final step that I ended up doing here was the stinger tip is a little bit crazy. We can kind of smooth that out running repair. What repair does is it deletes facets and then repairs them. It kind of heals over where the, the delete actually occurred. So here I'm going to say I want to select like this whole stinger tip and I can right click and drag to unselect facets I don't want. Say OK. And there, now I have a little bit more of a achievable stinger tip that's not so much of a needle point. Now if we apply all those settings to all the segments of the Scorpion model, we are able to make this mesh much more natural and create a much nicer surface finish at the machine, setting up this whole process for success. So we want to show you that mesh tools in Mastercam can take a really faceted and kind of ugly mesh and turn it into something really usable.